Let's talk about a few things, uh, some new things that I saw today recently. Uh, changes in the army. A couple of things, uh, one being potentially like uh, the APFT coming back, um, kind of in a way, and we'll talk about that, as well as some more changes to the hair standards, right? Not so great for the guys, but for the ladies out there. Some some good news probably for, for those individuals. All right, so first thing is we have uh, a few kind of things we're going to talk about. Let's talk about first the hair stuff. All right, again, doesn't affect you guys, but the ladies, this may be something nice for you. Uh, someone was asking, I don't know if, this, if some news had come out about this and they were wanting them to kind of talk about the new things, but then the Sergeant Major of the Army just dropped this. Um, this is still back in March. So this isn't like new, new news, but I'm, this is the first time I was hearing about it. But um, just saying, how about I save the trouble basically to release the news saying the long ponytail was originally voted against, but after hearing from our soldiers, the panel asked if they could reconsider the decision working out the details, but one to two ponytails in all uniforms down to the shoulder blades. So that I believe has become effective now. Um, looking at some Instagram stuff from, this is from US Army WTF moments. So this shows some photos of basically what the kind of new standard was, um, but now they're kind of extending on that. And now you'll be able to do ponytails. The confusing thing I hate about these graphics is that some of these do not match up to what they're saying is allowed, like this one right here, because that's too long, right? I think this one would be acceptable because it doesn't go past the bottom of the shoulder blades. Um, but like some of these other ones are kind of cutting it kind of close, I think. This one might barely make it maybe, uh, I don't know. Uh, so it's a little confusing. This one looks like it's good. I actually saw a female soldier today at where I work on Fort Carson that actually had a long ponytail. Hers was pretty long. Hers was probably like, Probably like this, which I feel like is cutting it pretty darn close um, and everything. So this must have been something new that just has gone into effect. So females can potentially now do longer ponytails and everything now. Um, but yeah, you can't have it like over your shoulders, though. It has to stay down the middle of their back and everything like that. You can't have it hanging over uh, the shoulders. So not very clear on some of these images too well. So it kind of gets a little bit tricky um, from task and purpose. They put in their arguments against ponytails, right? Because uh, I think some people don't understand some of the stuff here, which rightfully so. Maybe if you're not in the military, you probably don't have no idea what the hell's going on. So I saw some stuff in here where uh, they highlighted some comments that people were leaving, I think, on the armies, maybe Instagram or something about it or whatever it was. But yeah, things like here, until some terrorist grabs them by the ponytail and controls them and then kills them, right? Well, yes, that would probably be potentially a threat um, for two things, two things though with that. One, they're probably not getting close enough most commonly in current combat situations for that to happen. It can happen, but it can't. And I don't know. It's kind of tricky. But the main, main, main thing probably with that is that I'm pretty sure this is not allowed in a combat zone. This is, would be what would be in a combat zone to make the helmet fit better. This would not be something that they would be rocking in a combat zone, though. So that would not be a thing. The th key thing, I think, I'm pretty sure, I didn't specifically see exactly if that was the requirements, but I'm pretty sure it's going, it is or it's going to be, that you can only do this in garrison, which means when you're not deployed, when you're on the field. So you would not be in a combat zone rocking the ponytail. And that's what a, a couple of these other questions or comments basically say is that, you know, oh, people are just going to grab onto that, you know, ponytail and attack them and all that kind of fun stuff, right? But uh, yeah, I think the key thing with that is that they wouldn't be rocking a ponytail uh, while they were in a combat zone type of thing. So probably wouldn't have to worry about that. So the other thing uh, we'll talk just real briefly on was kind of like the APFT coming back, right? The Army Physical Fitness Test, right? You know, AC, not the ACFT, APFT though. So what we're talking about, the push-up, sit-up, and two-mile run, but with limitations, Sort of. All right. So basically for those E4s, specialists and corporals that are trying to make promotion points, they're basically allowing you to voluntarily take the APFT because they're still in this transition period with the APFT going to the ACFT. I mean, that was supposed to take effect October of 2020, but delays with COVID and everything else like that have delayed that to where it's not really taking effect until March of 2022. Uh, so that kind of affects things. But we're now at this, at this point where there's soldiers that joined at the beginning of COVID and have never taken a physical fitness test. 
And maybe they came in as an E3, as an E4, and they're trying to make those promotion points so they can get promoted to sergeant. But we're not doing the ACFT for them to earn points for that. So they don't really want to do the ACFT for points, I guess. So they are allowing soldiers to voluntarily take the AAPFT if they would like to try to get points. For soldiers that are in situations where they maybe already have one on record, but they're trying to do better on the APFT so that way they can improve their points to get promoted make the cutoff scores. They're allowing them to still take the, the APFT. And then if they do worse, it doesn't negatively affect them. Uh, they'll still go off of that better score. Also a key thing in there that it highlights is that if you take the APFT because you're trying to make points to make it to E5 to get Sergeant and you fail the APFT, the leadership is not going to hold it against you. They're not going to flag you. They're not going to try to kick you out of the army and all that stuff like that. It's essentially just a way to try to get more points. So that way, hopefully you can get promoted if you're in that situation where without that APFT score being higher or having it all, you can't make promotion points because of the way your MOS is. So kind of a thing uh, kind of with that. Uh, as far as how they're kind of doing things with kind of bringing back the APFT for the purpose of promotion and everything like that. So I don't know. I think it, it probably helps out those soldiers for that one. Uh, the ponytails probably helps with morale. I think the Air Force already does this anyway, so it's not that big of a deal, really. As long as you're not doing the combat in the field, ponytails not that big of a deal. Of course, the guys still want beards. I still see comments in there with guys like, hey, what about the beards? I don't, I don't know, guys. I don't know if, we're ever, if you guys are ever getting the bird, beards, but you can always keep hoping and keep bugging about it. Maybe eventually somebody obviously kept bugging them about long ponytails and that worked. Maybe if you keep it up and just keep bugging them about beards, eventually, eventually that'll be a thing. I don't know.